Hey everyone, this is Trainboy, and welcome back to another video. Now, you guys may or may not remember, but last year Six Flags had announced that they will be removing 15 underperforming rides across their various parks. I'm sure most of you had forgotten about this announcement already, since pretty much nothing was removed, but I recently received inside information from a super credible source, exposing exactly which rides will be removed from various Six Flags parks. Not every Six Flags park will be removing a ride, however, the majority of them will. Without further ado, let's get started. So as a legitimate and honest YouTuber, I would never clickbait and will always truthfully provide everything that I promise to provide. So so let's get started with the title and thumbnail of this video. The first ride to be removed from a Six Flags park is X2 at Six Flags Magic Mountain. For those of you who do not know, X2 is by far the most expensive roller coaster at Six Flags Magic Mountain, costing approximately $46 million to construct, and at least a lot to maintain. That being said, this ride is becoming more and more difficult to maintain over the years, especially with its original manufacturer Aerodynamics bankrupt. For these reasons, X2 will be completely demolished and will not be opening to the public ever again. Next, let's move on to Six Flags Great Adventure. Six Flags Great Adventure is home to the world's tallest and America's fastest roller coaster, with the world's tallest drop ride built on itself. However, due to New Jersey regulations, the trains require over-the-shoulder type restraints, which means that the trains are heavier and the ride is less comfortable. Not only has ridership gone down significantly over the years, but maintenance costs have gone up, also considering that it uses an Intamin hydraulic launch. That being said, Six Flags has decided to tear down the entire structure, removing both King Deca and Zumanjaro Drop of Doom, meaning Six Flags Great Adventure will be losing two rides this year. Moving on to the two major Six Flags parks in Texas. Both of these parks will actually be losing a major coaster. For those of you who do not know, New Texas Giant and Iron Rattler were both originally made by the company RCCA, aka Roller Coaster Corporation of America, who were notorious for building poorly built, sketchy, and painful coasters such as Cedar Point's Mean Streak and the infamous Son of Beast at King's Island. That being said, the amusement park safety people of Texas declared both New Texas Giant and Iron Rattler to be unsafe, poorly built rides, even though they both received makeovers from Rocky Mountain Construction. Nonetheless, these two coasters will be removed in the coming weeks. While on the topic of RMC, let's move over to Six Flags Great America, home of what was once the tallest and fastest wooden coaster, Goliath. Similarly to the notorious lightning rod, Goliath has been experiencing excessive wear and tear on its wooden track work, especially given that it travels at such a high velocity. Due to budgeting reasons, Six Flags is not going to replace the track with iBox track, but instead they are going to completely tear down Goliath. Moving on to Six Flags New England, Six Flags has finally decided to do something with Six Flags New England's infamous double boomerang collection, which happened to be a standard Vekoma boomerang directly next to a Vekoma giant inverted boomerang. Six Flags will be removing both of these coasters, but don't worry because Six Flags actually already has a replacement ready. Stinger, which was formerly located at Dorney Park, is finally going to be relocated to Six Flags New England. So this means that Six Flags New England is going to be losing two boomerangs and replacing them with one boomerang, this time an inverted face-to-face -face boomerang instead. Now let's take a look at Six Flags Over Georgia. Fortunately, Six Flags Over Georgia will not be removing a major coaster this year. However, they will be removing Acrophobia, their unique drop tower ride. Unfortunately, this is not the only change at Six Flags Over Georgia. The other day, a bird landed on the brake run of Six Flags Over Georgia's B&M Hyper Goliath. This bird happened to poop right on one of the proximity sensors, which completely obscured obscured its vision, causing the ride to malfunction, sending an empty test train into another empty train parked into the station. Luckily, no one was hurt, however, both of Goliath's trains were heavily damaged and are now out of commission. Fortunately, Six Flags has a backup. Six Flags still has Six Flags America's B&M stand-up trains from Apocalypse, and will be temporarily using them on Goliath until the Goliath trains are repaired. This means for the 2021 season, Goliath will be operating as a B&M stand-up hyper. I personally think that this is a positive change, because I have always wanted to experience powerful airtime with no inversions while standing up on a roller coaster. Moving on, let's go over to Six Flags La Ronde, where they were originally supposed to receive Levy Pair, a relocated Intamin's Axpin from Six Flags Magic Mountain. 
However, because of the recent global pandemic, Six Flags has changed their minds and will be removing the ride from Six Flags La Ronde and will actually be sending it back to Six Flags Magic Mountain where it will reopen as Green Lantern's second flight. Similarly to La Ronde, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom was never able to build their new for 2020 coaster either, Sidewinder Safari. However, unlike Green Lantern, Sidewinder Safari will be scrapped and never actually built, which according to Six Flags also counts as a ride removal. Unfortunately, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom is not done. Back in 2012, Superman Ultimate Flight, aka the first ever Premier Skyrocket 2, got stuck at the very top of the ride, before the first inversion. Since the city of Vallejo is full of meanies, they created a strike system for this ride. The first incident was Strike 1. Recently, as the park has been preparing for reopening, the ride has been cycling and once again the same incident has occurred, leaving an empty train stalled in the same spot. Even though there were no riders on board, Vallejo counted this as a second strike. Luckily, Superman still had one strike left. However, as a maintenance worker went to rescue the train, a strong gust of wind blew the train backwards, where it began to roll back, while a maintenance man was trying to free the train. Luckily, no one was hurt, however, Vallejo said that the maintenance worker was put in a very dangerous situation, and that this ride is no longer safe to operate, thus giving it its third strike. This means that Superman Ultimate Flight will be removed at some point in the next few weeks. Taking a look at Six Flags St. Louis, we are going to unfortunately be seeing the unfortunate removal of Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast Coaster Run, fortunately. Similarly to the defunct Batman and Robin Chiller Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure, Mr. Freeze suffers from major technical issues and downtime, with the LIMs constantly requiring excessive maintenance. Unlike Six Flags Over Texas, Six Flags St. Louis is not willing to consistently pay for these excessive maintenance costs and have decided that it is better off to remove this ride and replace it with something far more reliable. For this reason, Six Flags is actually taking the giant inverted boomerang that used to be at Six Flags New England and Six Flags Magic Mountain and relocating it again to Six Flags St. Louis where it will be renamed Green Lantern Third Flight. This ride was proven to be extremely reliable and never experienced any downtime while at Six Flags New England, meaning it should hopefully be a much more reliable coaster to reliably operate at the reliable Six Flags St. Louis. Moving on to Six Flags Darien Lake, Six Flags is actually going to be removing their newest coaster, Tantrum, a Gerslauer Eurofighter. If you guys do not remember, the accident on the new Texas Giant in 2013 created a very conflicted and unhealthy relationship between Six Flags and German manufacturer Gerslauer. Now, Tantrum was actually added before Six Flags had acquired operating rights of the park in 2018, however Six Flags has finally come to the decision to remove Tantrum due to it being made manufactured by their enemy, Gerslauer. Rest in peace, Tantrum. Finally, we are moving on to the final ride that will be removed from a Six Flags Park. And this final ride that will finally be removed from the final Six Flags Park is going to be Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. Ghost Rider is famously known for being the hands-down world's greatest wooden roller coaster of all time. That being said, the immense popularity of this ride has actually started to become a serious problem. Due to longer lines and wait times for the ride, the Ghost Rider ride ops sometimes need to assign seating, meaning they will have to pick what row you can sit in in order to speed along operations. Unfortunately, this has allegedly caused numerous issues among the coaster enthusiasts. Assigned seatings have caused coaster enthusiasts to become extremely upset because they don't want to wait in a three hour line only to be forced to sit in row seven. That being said, there have been several reports of acts of violence towards the ride ops created by hostile coaster enthusiasts. Not only are coaster enthusiasts physically beating up ride ops, but there have also been several lawsuits made by the coaster enthusiasts against Six Flags' Knott's Berry Farm. Due to all these problems, Six Flags has come to an executive decision to remove Ghost Rider to prevent further lawsuits or acts of violence. Don't worry, however, because the ride isn't going to be entirely scrapped. Though the ride will not be RMC'd, they are going to be keeping the majority of the structure and replacing it with a new ride. This new ride is actually going to be following the trend of reviving old rides that used to operate at Knott's Berry Farm years ago. 
Six Flags is actually going to bring back the old classic family dark ride, Kingdom of the Dinosaurs, which used to sit where Barry Tales and then Voyage to the Iron Reef and then Barry Tales again now sit. Six Flags has also already released an animated preview of what this attraction will look like, using Ghost Rider's current structure. Anyways, I'm sorry if you guys are upset by any of these removals. I know that there will be a lot of sad coaster enthusiasts who will be losing some of their favorite rides. If you were bummed out by any of these rides being removed at any of these parks, then be sure to flip your screen upside down and click the thumbs down button. This will show me that your smile has been turned upside down, and you dislike the removals coming to each of these Six Flags parks. One final thing, if I have succeeded at improving your April Fool's Day even slightly, then be sure to convert the red subscribe button into a gray one. You can do so by simply clicking it with your mouse or tapping it with your finger depending on the device you are currently using to watch this video. Okay, bye.